Hello friends. This aquarium or pond with turtles and fish in it suffers the same issues any body of water suffers. The amount of water in it suffers from evaporation and consumption. So every day we have to be replenishing a certain amount of water in it to keep it at the right level. Because this aquarium, the water of this aquarium goes down to a box of filters and from there the water is taken from a, to a pump that pulls it back into the aquarium. And that pump has to be under water all the time. If the level of water falls too far, the pump will start working dry and that will ruin the pump. So every day, in this case, I have to be replenishing it with about 10 or 12 litres of water. And I want to apply the same principle I've been, same method I've been applying for the plants in the balcony to this system so that I can be supplying bits of water drop by drop throughout the day. So at the end of the day, the 10 or 12 litres are complete. So I don't have to be replenishing it myself, but it's an automatic procedure that goes on day after day. And so we can leave it without replenishing it with water for about six days, seven days or so on. So I'm going to apply the same method with the micro valves and the drippers. Um, I believe this same procedure, one could use it in an aquarium inside the house, but that would only be possible if the aquarium has an overflow. Because I can't define exactly the exact amount of water to be supplying because it changes throughout the day. It changes throughout the year also. It isn't only 12, 10 litres, it might be more or less, depending on the amount of sun, temperatures, the consumption, etc. So, if an aquarium doesn't have an overflow, simply the excess of water one might be supplying will increase the level of the water in the aquarium till it overflows on the side and what the, the room. Uh, this aquarium has an overflow in the box of filters where the pump is, so that is no problem. This system comprises a container that has 50 litres of water in it, and inside the container we have these tubes. The tubes pull water out from the bottom, they rise, they go over there, come down here, and here we have valves. And these valves will deliver the exact amount of water I need in the aquarium. Thanks to the difference of height between the bottom of the tank and the aquarium, the water starts dripping there in about an eight. Now, we tried this first with two micro valves and it wasn't enough. So we tried it with this other valve that has a wheel and this valve, regretfully, it deregulates on its own. So it's not trustworthy. So this, this valve is now not working anymore and I replaced it for another system. What we have here is a high volume valve used in irrigation and I thought this would work, but these kind of valves are very hard to turn. You can't get uh, a mid-value of flows intermediate between very high or nothing. So I've left it completely open now and I'm using this plastic clamp to regulate the amount of drops I want to or bring into my aquarium. And this is the kind of flow we get. One tube provides a flow we can increase in high volumes and another tube that brings us a flow we can regulate very finely and in this way get as near as possible to the flow we need constantly. Now once we have this flow we have to calculate how many liters per day we're getting and of course we have to observe the overflow to see if we are getting an excess of flow or we don't have enough. With this plastic cup, we can verify which is the volume of water we're getting with this flow throughout five minutes. And with that data, 
calculate the volume of water supplied in 24 hours. So, now we have to measure the volume of water in the cup with a syringe. 10 milliliters, 20 milliliters, 30 milliliters, and 40 milliliters. Now, 40 milliliters is for 5 minutes. For 10 minutes, it would be 80 milliliters. And in an hour, we have 6 by 10 minutes. So by 6, that makes 480 milliliters per hour. And for 24 hours, we have, by 24, 11.5 liters. That is very near to what we need. And that is just about one drop per second. I believe that with this amount, will be fine. We will have to check in the following 24 hours how our overflow is working. If it has dropped a few milliliters of water throughout the night or has dropped too much. So we have to check here how much water is coming out on the overflow. If we have too much water coming out of the overflow we have to cut the flow of it and if we don't have any water coming out of here we have to open up the flow a bit so we have a few drops. Now during the day, as water evaporates a lot, we shouldn't expect many drops falling. But throughout the night, as there's no evaporation or much less, then we would have an excess and that excess should drop in here throughout the night. However, it should not be more than one centimeter high here. Because that means that in five days, we might fill the whole container. That would be a, a, a good amount of excess coming out of the overflow. Not more than that. With this container, we can't see how much water we have. So we need an easy way to see that. We have to make a level indicator. What we have here is a level indicator. It will tell us how much water we have left inside our container, if it's empty or if it's full. This level indicator is formed by a fine steel rod stuck inside a cork. And we have a shaft or an axis here that will move around either downwards when the container is empty of water or upwards and level when the container is full of water. We need some refrigerator tubing from an old refrigerator. We cut two similar lengths. We make a cut in each one so we can fit one into the other in a perfectly square 90 degree angle. Then we solder or braze them. In this case, I use hard solder to get it strong, but you may also use lead or tin solder. Then we slide it into a steel rod up to a pair of notches we filed out there and there, which should fall within the length of the tube. Then we clamp the ends with a pliers so the tube stays fixed there and doesn't move out of place. And this is the axis that moves it up and down. We have to make a cutout at the top of the container and cover. So the rod can move freely like a lever. From vertical to horizontal without any obstruction. Then we make two holes on each side of the cutout. So we can tie the axis onto the inside of the container. Now I'm going to show you the supports I'm making to hold it in place. We make a ring with these pliers big enough 
so the axis turns very easily. And these corners, we bend them at the same vertical distance between the holes we made on the container. We make one for each side of the axis, so the axis can't slip out of the supports. Okay, that wasn't easy, but it worked. Now we have to fill it with water so it remains in its horizontal position. Well, we made our measurements, we've checked the overflow that we're getting the right amount of water into the aquarium, it's just enough to keep it balanced between consumption, evaporation and input. Now we can go out travel a few days, three, four, five days, we're going to the beach to do some videos for walking parks and beaches. Go and watch them in my other channel. Well, I hope you liked this video and if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye bye.